what a pleasure it is to have Ryan Field right now. He is a New York City ABC7 lead sports anchor, but my goodness, his roots go back to Los Angeles, FS1, Fox oh. Sports Radio, Fox Sports Detroit. The list goes on. He is a on great guy. All of these great memories, and I'm going to ask you all about them. Also, Ryan, I'm going to ask you about the, the time that you jumped 125 feet off a waterfall. That happened in a <laughs> Guatemala. That too, huh? Yeah, that was <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm lucky I'm still here to talk about that. To be yes. <laughs> Ryan Field is with us. He's on Twitter at Ryan Field ABC. I'm Brian Fenley, an anchor at Fox Sports Radio on Twitter at Brian Fenley. So we're going to spotlight you, Ryan. Have some fun here. One of the questions that I have to start with is your rise to fame when you were on The Price is Right. <laughs> now, I want to ask you this. The tucked in t-shirt that you showcased, yes. the frosty tips that you are yes. known to bring about. Did you see yourself back then being this trendsetter of, of a style man that you've become today? I, I thought you were going to say sex symbol. And that's exactly <laughs> what I myself as. Uh, with the tucked in t-shirt into the carpenter jeans. No yes. Uh, with the black belt. Uh, it was uh, with the t-shirt underneath the t-shirt. It, it was it was circa 2001 at its finest. Uh, you know, I thought I thought I was all that back then, man. We all did at one point in our lives, and I'm looking back at it, it's, uh, it looks even worse now uh, than it did then. So uh, it was uh, it was a heck of an adventure, and, and I, I tell people all the time that I could have dinner at the White House with President Biden in the Oval Office, and people would be like, "Okay, yeah, that's pretty cool." But you tell someone you were on the Showcase Showdown at the Price Is Right, and they're like, "Oh my god." <laughs> They just think it's the craziest thing ever to uh, to have gone through that experience. And uh, yeah, man, 20 years ago uh, in February, I was on it. So wow. it's kind of crazy how much time has passed. Uh, and I was on with Bob Barker and Rod Roddy, like the original legends of the show. So uh, definitely, uh, definitely an all-time memory. The only regret is that I overbid on the showcase. I mean, that's something that's <laughs> never going to get back. You had a once-in-a-lifetime chance and I blew it. So uh, that still hangs over my head to this day. How would you rate your serotonin level when you found out that you were going to be featured on, on that show compared to covering the grandest sporting event on the greatest stage of your sports <laughs> broadcasting career? I, I think there's no comparison. I mean, when Rod Roddy says, come on down, Ryan Field, <laughs> I mean, you, you can't put into words what that's like. Uh, and just the surprise, I mean, for those people that don't know, the producers know they're going to pick you. You go in in front of the producer and they'll say, Brian, tell me something about yourself. So you got basically 10 seconds to sell yourself. And I told a little white lie. Because I'd, already been, I'd already been graduated from Michigan State for about a year and a half, but I told them I was still a student at Michigan State. I had my Michigan State t-shirt on. You know, they weren't checking my, uh, you know, uh, education records or anything like that. And sure as hell, man, I was one of the first four people called down to start the show. And uh, to say I was surprised would be an understatement. It was unbelievable. So in a way in which Ryan Field, and, and Ryan is with us, I'm Brian Fenley, this is the On to Something podcast, you are a bit of a daredevil, you're, you're one who enjoys the thrill, you are a thrill seeker, and another avenue which you channeled that part of that side of you was when you jumped or rappelled down a 120 foot waterfall in a Guatemalan jungle, what were you thinking, sounds Ryan like, Field? Sounds like a, a safe and fun thing to do, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm not sure what I was thinking. I, I'd like to tell you that it was all my idea, but I definitely got bullied by some of my friends who I'm sure you have buddies like that too, that call you every name in the book when uh, you don't want to do something. So then your, uh, your manhood gets tested and you feel like you need to find a way to step up. So we repelled down backwards, like a normal repel first. And then they call it Aussie style, Australian style, where you go face first down the waterfall where you're like walking down picture like uh, the old Batman uh, television series when they're climbing up the wall, but just the opposite. You're going down the wall uh, and you're right alongside the waterfall. Uh, it was probably one of the hairiest things I've ever done. And I've been skydiving and bungee jumping and, uh, you know, I flew in an F-16. I mean, I've done all kind of adrenaline junkie type things. Uh, and that one was right there at the top of the list because you literally walk off the waterfall and then you're facing parallel to the ground 120 feet up and you just got to walk your way down. I can't explain it other than to tell you that you should try it at least once in your life and make sure you have at least two safety harnesses on you, <laughs> just in case. Just in case. case. Yeah. So you are a risk taker when it comes to doing these sort of things in your life. You talked about the F-16 and, and the waterfall and beyond. When is the moment in your life, Ryan, when you took the biggest risk on yourself, the biggest chance on yourself in your career? 
I mean, I think when I left the comforts of home, I grew up in Michigan. As I said, went to Michigan State. I'm from Metro Detroit, spent my first 35 years of my life there uh, up until eight years ago when through Fox, I got a promotion or at least a chance at one through Fox Sports 1 to launch a new network. And, you know, when you're covering all the teams you watched as a kid and grew up loving as a kid, the, the Pistons, the Tigers, the Red Wings, uh, I said it would have to take something really special to pull me away from there. And, you know, it, it was definitely a risk. You're, you're starting a new network. Uh, you're coming in on the ground floor with like 200 people, which was exhilarating and, and such a fun ride at the same time. And, you know, you made friendships that will last a lifetime. But, you know, there was a lot of trial and error with the new network. Uh, including the show that I was hired for, Fox Sports Live, which was basically FS1's answer to Sports Center, uh, and they had a bunch of other shows and that eventually all got canceled. And you know, when it came time to renew my contract, they just didn't have enough for me to do because the network had pivoted and gone to a talking head type format with the likes of Colin Coward and Skip Bayless, and, and right on down the line. So I, I think you know, at that point, I kind of put my career. Uh, you know, on the line, if you will, and um, took a took a chance. And, uh, you know, as a kid who grew up in Michigan with a chance to move to sunny Southern California, that definitely was not something that I um, uh, was going to turn down, I guess, at that point, it was something that I felt was worth the risk. And, um, you know, it didn't quite pan out the way that I wanted to despite three and a half great years in LA. Uh, and now I ended up here in New York at ABC. So I think you could say it all worked out in the end. But there was definitely um, you know, a lot of chance and risk involved when I made that jump. You can't stop talent. Ryan Field is talented, to say the least. I'm Brian Fenley. And you also, while you were in Los Angeles, alongside you doing the work with FS1, you were also at, <clears throat> excuse me, at Fox Sports Radio. And so I'd love for you to break down the role you played there, the guys you got to work with. It's a bit nostalgic for me as I work there now, but yeah. before I got there, you were there and love to to take me through the mindset of Ryan Field when you were doing shows on the radio there? <laughs> well, you know, being a TV guy my whole career, going to radio is such a different platform because it allows me to offer up opinions, which frankly, I don't get a chance to do working from the sports desk. You know, you might sneak one in on occasion, but when you've got a four hour window to basically say what's on your mind, uh, that's something that I frankly hadn't been afforded the luxury of in my career to that point. And it was all in conjunction with FS1 and Fox Sports Radio, obviously all part of the same family. And I started there in 2014 with my Fox Sports Live co-host, Don Bell. Uh, and we did that show for over a year, just the two of us. And then eventually Don moved on to Philadelphia. And then I, you know, I had Jimmy Jackson as a partner and Mike Hill and Ephraim Salam and Mark Willard uh, right on down the line. And I would do the show on Sundays from 10 to 2 Pacific. And we just had a blast, man. I mean, especially during football season where you're, you're whipping around the NFL and talking all the games and we'd have players and broadcasters on after the games and doing post-game analysis. And, you know, we had some fun guests. We had a porn star on one time <laughs> who talked about her love for the, uh, the Kansas City Royals. Uh, we, we had that. We actually got in trouble for that one because some of the conversations kind of veered into <laughs> a... Uh, a topic that wasn't really appropriate for a Sunday morning audience, if you know what I mean, <laughs> uh, as people on their way to church. Uh, we definitely heard from the bosses about that. But uh, yeah, they're, they're, you know, it, radio is, is such a fun forum. And hopefully one day I'll get a chance to get back into it. Um, you know, especially if I can find a way to moonlight doing both uh, the way I did then in L.A., uh, but yeah, for, for you radio guys, I mean, I, I'm very jealous of the platform that you have and uh, the chance to speak your mind and, and have some fun for four hours with some guy talk and, uh, and just kind of live it up. It's, uh, there's nothing like it. Ryan Field is with us. I'm Brian Fenley. In terms of finding your voice and getting into that commentary, what is generally your take on sports when you attack an issue? when you can say, oh, that was Ryan Field's take on it, like finding that form of who you are and how you, what's it like looking through sports in your lens when you are able to give or have that outlet to, to speak your opinion on things? Yeah, I think for me, you're a little more guarded because you have the television side of your career, which obviously is your bread and butter. And that's something that you have to be very cognizant of because it's so ratings driven and it's so much more, um, you know, narrowly focused than a radio show where you've got so much more wiggle room to do so many more different things. So I went on there as a TV host on a radio show. 
So I wasn't a radio host on a radio show. So even though I had some fun and I definitely took some more risks, um, you know, when I told the porn star that, you know, that Kansas City Royals loss must have been tough to swallow, uh, you know, <laughs> things like that, that you would never say uh, on TV. Yeah. Uh, but, but you're still kind of walking that line because, you know, in the back of your head that your television career is what got you into this position. And that's ultimately what mattered. So I was still, for the most part, um, very guarded in terms of how I expressed opinions. Uh, trying not to be too con- controversial, but definitely, um, you know, making my opinions and, and comments known when I felt like I had a strong opinion on something, but still not going, I would say, 100% into it, uh, knowing that I needed to be somewhat careful because of my nighttime job. You know who goes fully into issues is Rob Parker, someone I adore, a great guy in the business. Yes. I saw you, you recently got to catch up with him. What has he meant to you in your career and your relationship well, with him? Yeah, I mean, we go back to shoot like the late 90s when he first got started at WDFN in Detroit when he got hired there to be the um, you know, one of the sports talk radio hosts. And I was just coming out of college. And, you know, one of those guys that you'd see at different sporting events. And uh, Rob is such a good guy taken even to this day. He's a, he's a professor. Uh, I think it is UC, USC. He's a professor. Yeah. Or UCLA, one of them. I think it's USC. And he teaches a journalism class out there. And he's always been very big on kind of paying it forward for the broadcasters of tomorrow. So he kind of did that with me, took me under his wing, uh, gave me some great advice and just kind of, you know, made sure I was on the right path. Uh, and he's a guy that I've just kept in touch with over the years and he's doing big things out in LA now and I'm so happy for him and we had a chance to, to catch up over some dinner uh, here in the city a couple of weeks ago and uh, as you know Brian I mean this business is it's very small and then the more the longer you're in it you get to know everybody and I think those relationships to maintain those and those friendships is just so vitally important uh, because you always want to be rooting each other on and being supportive for, for other people that are in the industry and uh, and Rob definitely epitomizes that. Yeah, he is such a class act as you are. Where do you get your motivation from? I think my motivation is just, uh, you know, I'm doing a job that doesn't feel like a job. And, and I'm sure you're the same way. I mean, it's not like we're working uh, at a law firm or we're working at an accounting firm where you're kind of going in and staring at numbers and staring at a computer all day. And, you know, those nine to five jobs can kind of wear you down a little bit. Uh, you and I get to come in to work every day and talk about sports and I get to talk about how bad the Jets are. And, uh, you know, the, you know, the Mets are in first place and then the Yankees, what's going on with them? I mean, th- these are not, um, you know, we're not curing cancer here. You know what I mean? We're, we're there to kind of provide some entertainment for some folks and kind of be their escape uh, from their everyday life. And I think my motivation is just to come in and, uh, you know, be that person that maybe puts a smile on somebody's face when they're watching the newscast. Maybe you make a little joke or show a funny clip and something that kind of, you know, leaves a little mark during my three and a half minutes that I get at, uh, at six and 11. And I think, I think there's something to be said about that. And you and I have jobs that, you know, frankly, a lot of people would kill to have. And I think sometimes we kind of lose that in our day in and day out grind and routine. And sometimes you kind of have to, you know, take a step back and remember uh, what we're doing here for a living and just how unique it is and how cool it is to be able to do what we do. When you take a step back and you reflect upon your career so far, what moment or what moments force you to laugh at yourself? Um, boy. Outside of tucking in my jeans into my or tucking in my <laughs> into my carpenter jeans, uh, that that's definitely one of them. Uh, you know, there was a time I got caught singing on the air when I was covering the finals back in 2004. We had lost a feed with the post game interview with Ben Wallace, and I was singing the overhead music at Staples Center, uh, which was Queen under pressure. And I probably sang a good 10, 15 seconds of that song on the air live, not knowing that I was on the air live. <laughs> Uh, and my producer was trying to get my attention behind the camera. It was like that scene in Anchorman where you hear that whisper come on uh, and he's like, you are on. And he's like, I don't believe you. That was exactly what it was like. Uh, He told me I was on and I I frankly didn't believe him, but yeah, you know, you kind of laugh at yourself um, and and make a joke. I said, um, I said, that'll do it for karaoke hour. Now it's uh, now it's back to the show. Um, it was a time I forgot what I was going to say on TV one time and literally said, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, you just, you just have those moments, man, where, and I'm sure you've had them in your broadcasting career where you look back and while it might seem cringeworthy at the time, uh, you can kind of look back and laugh at it because, you know, it's just another day at the office and you're going to have bad days. And, 
uh, it, it's all in how you react to it. And uh, I think that's so much uh, the case. It's like a metaphor for life. You know, it's, it's all in how you respond to the adversity. And uh, it's, it's definitely funny to look back at some of those moments that you had growing up. And, you know, to this day, I still have mess ups on the air. And, uh, you know, you, you say the wrong name. I mean, shoot, I got crushed on Twitter like two years ago because we had a late Rangers game and my producer missed it. I missed it. And we said a guy scored the game winning goal and he wasn't even playing in the game. He was hurt and he was a late scratch and we just had the wrong player. And I got off the air and I had like 50 Twitter notifications. Oh gosh. And, that, and that's enough to make your heart start to race. You're like, holy hell, what did I just say? And yeah, we, we, we said the wrong thing and uh, I had to own up to it and I had to, you know, uh, not issue an apology per se, but had to acknowledge that I had messed up. And, you know, that, that's what you call a bad day at the office, buddy. But, yeah, I mean, we all have those experiences. Yeah, Certainly, course. there's a human aspect to all of this. How do you view social media? And how do you look at it, especially when you get the trolls out there? What is your way of dealing with that and using it to your advantage? I think it's social media is a necessary evil in today's day and age, especially being in sports. I mean, as you well know, you've got the Adam Schefter, the Adrian Wojnarowski's, who you'll see it on Twitter before it's even on ESPN. I mean, that's the first place they go. And for guys like you and I that are in this industry, I mean, we have to rely on social media a lot of times to get our information. Um, but you also deal with a lot of the trolls who, uh, you know, God bless them, tweeting from their parents' basement or wherever the hell they're at. I mean, I posted a picture of me yesterday when I told my story how I had COVID, how I just got over it. Uh, and I was in my suit. And during the summertime, I wear white shoes, white sneakers with my suit. I mean, you don't see me, you don't see me from the waist up on TV. And this guy uh, texts or tweeted at me. He said, nice shoes, douchebag. And uh, I said... I said, I'd be more than happy to send you a pair if you'd like, so like, a little, <laughs> like a little passive aggressive, right? Yeah. So you go ahead and, uh, you know, I, I once had a guy tweeted me, he said, uh, there's no way that you're heterosexual. Now I uh, am fully heterosexual and I, I typed out, I said, that's not what your mom said last night. <laughs> I didn't send it, but I really wanted to send it. Yeah. And sometimes it's the little things that you can t say to yourself that kind of make you get over it. But a lot of times when I see those tweets, I just favor them. I like them. I don't respond. And I find that that pisses people off even more when you do that. And so be it. Yeah, I know. I love it. My final question, Ryan Field is with us. I'm Brian Fenley. What was a no you got maybe early on in your career that you look back to and say, man, this is what really fired me up and got me to where I am today. You know, when I was in Lansing, my first job, I had tried to get um, representation because I felt like I wanted to get into a top 50 television market. Lansing is market 116. And I had reached out to this agency in LA, Ken Lindner and Associates, which is a powerhouse agency for TV broadcasters. And they were interested, they were interested. And then within a couple months, the guy got back to me. He said, looks like you put on a little weight. We can see it in your face. You're really not what we're looking for at this time, but we wish you all the best in your career. Fast forward, 15 years later, I had fired my agent, was looking for representation and who came reaching out, but none other than Ken Leonard. Associates. Oh my and, gosh. I, and I am now a proud client of Ken Leonard Associates. Wow. Uh, yeah, for the last six years. Uh, that's my agency. So I took a roundabout way of finally being represented by them. But uh, that's where we are now. And I told my agent that story, that guy who told me that uh, left the industry long ago. Uh, and she just thinks that's the funniest story because now I've come full circle and now I'm represented by Ken Linder and Associates. So wow. you never know how things are going to work out, man. You never know. And Ryan Field, I'll tell you one thing that was never a surprise is seeing the trajectory of your career and what you've been able to do. Happy to see Thanks. you thriving in New York. Next time I get up to New York City, would love to say hi. Ryan Field, fun to dive into some of those memories, some of those funny moments of your career. Really appreciate you. I'm Ryan Fenley. Thanks so much. Thanks, Brian.